All right. So, hey, this is Jason uh, uh, with WP GraphQL. I'm doing a pair session with Alex, uh, working on WP GraphQL for SEO Press. Uh, so we're going to dig into uh, showing settings from SEO Press in the WP GraphQL schema, and then also look at uh, showing SEO fields on taxonomy terms. Is that about right? Yeah. Cool. All right, so yeah, if you want to pull up your uh, code editor and okay, so we we looked at this briefly before and the SEO press, can you open up the SEO press plugin? Do you have that code handy? Uh, like actual SEO press? Yeah, yeah, because I want to look at how they're registering the settings again. Uh, we looked at this oh, before yeah. and they're like registering all their settings just in the admin context and an API yeah. like GraphQL or REST is uh, outside of the admin context uh, and so that's why these settings are not working in WP GraphQL out of the box. Where did we have that conversation? Uh, I don't remember. There we go. <laughs> Maybe? Um, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Cool. So I just want to take a look here again. So they register their settings to is admin somewhere in here. Yeah. Admin in it. Okay. So one thing I'm wondering, it may or may not be as easy as this. We might be able to just execute that page in it. Uh, like in your plugin, we might be able to hook that right. into like uh, when like GraphQL register types. Maybe. Yeah, I think. Oh, have you tried that already? This is what I, this is my add action GraphQL admit SEO press options, but I don't think that's correct. Okay, yeah, so we'll have to, yeah, so uncomment that real quick. And then instead of SEO press options, just do like a, a function right there. Do, are you uh, familiar? Yeah. Uh, just, uh, you could just do f like actual word function. It'd be like, what's a closure in PHP? So the function and then uh, open, close parentheses and then curly brackets. Yeah, okay. And then you don't need SEO press options right now. So just hit enter right there. So this is just gonna say when GraphQL is going to initialize. Execute something, yeah. Uh, you know, do this function. Um, and so what we wanna do now, we're gonna instantiate their class. So go. can you go back to the code you just had on their plugin so I can look at it again so they have class SEO press options okay so we're gonna we're gonna instantiate that class real quick so back in your code create a variable so just like dollar sign SEO press options uh, equals and then new you'll have to say new SEO press yeah and then, uh, uh, yeah, open, close parentheses, and then a semicolon. We, PHP needs them. Uh, mm. And then, so that'll instantiate the class again. And then we're going to say uh, SEO press options for, so with the dollar sign. Uh, I know. You, and then it's a arrow instead of a dot. Yeah. And then it'll, it'll be, be <laughs> yeah, it'll be whatever their what, page in it. I think it was like page underscore in it. Uh, it'll just be a, instead of, let's see, it'll just be, um, yeah, page in it. So it should just be, well, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. So semicolon after what is, okay, let's, Give that a shot. We'll see. Uh, let me make sure GraphQL in it is actually the right hook to let me double check. I want to make sure let's do, let's change it to actually let's give that a shot and then open up a uh, graphical in, uh, yeah, the WP admin. Something. Oh, right. no, screwed it up. All right. Add settings section. Oh, hold on. Hold on one second. Um, we include the settings API somewhere in those GraphQL already. Let me find out where. 
I might have a better hook for you to hook into one second. Let me, I'm going to have to look. Sorry. I'm... So basically, basically what's happening is we need some stuff from WordPress core to hook into the API. We already, mm -hmm. we already do this somewhere. but I can't remember where. So I'm just looking for it. Okay. Um, can you change the hook instead of GraphQL in it? Change it to in it underscore GraphQL underscore request. And then, are you familiar with giving hook giving hooks priorities in WordPress? Yeah. So, so give it a priority of 11. So it'd just be comma 11. Cause, and, it, and then that that's, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Priority 11 is fine. And then there's no argument. So you don't need to do a second parameter. Right. Yeah, that should work. So at that hook, the core WP GraphQL already. Yeah, cool. So the core WP GraphQL at priority 10 is already including like WordPress settings APIs. So my hope is that if they're using register settings API properly, we're doing our job. So, but it may or may not be the case. Let's see, is the schema gonna load? Maybe not. That's your press that if options not found. Oh shoot. Oh, we might have to, Oh, well, that's probably just, that could just be your IDE. Yeah, that, this is a debugger. I, I just turned on the debugger. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. Do we need to use those? Like well, we do for WP GraphQL up here? Yeah, we shouldn't, but possibly, let's see. You're, oh, maybe you're in a, you're in a namespace file, so it might be, Go back to their code again, their class. Let me see if they're using namespaces at all. And we might have to put a slash. Okay, they're not. So put, since you're in a namespace file, I think, or wait, are you? Let me look at your file again. You're not using namespaces. So you should be fine. But let's see. Okay, go. I have an idea. I think you're your plugins being loaded before their plugin. So go down to where we just did that. Well, mm -hmm. hold on though. This hook, they must be only including that. Oh, come on. Let me, let's go back to their plugin. So SEO press options. We got three options there. I'm curious where they're including this class. My guess, if we go back a level, like go up uh, in GitHub, scroll up, um, my guess is somewhere where they're including this file is also scoped to is admin. Maybe do a search real quick in GitHub for that class name. And let's see where they're, they're gonna be requiring it somewhere. My guess is they're doing it somewhere in Update options. It's the only place we ever found it. Uh, it has to be somewhere else. <laughs> like this won't execute unless it's included or required somewhere. So uh, that's interesting. Should we search for like 
I guess just go to the main file. So go to the root file of their plugin and we'll just have to look for it. They have to be requiring it somewhere for it to execute. But they could like have a variable for it or something somewhere. Okay, let's go down. SEO press. Okay. Okay, here they're requiring some stuff here. Admin header. There it is, right there. Okay. Okay, it yeah. So that. they're doing it. Okay, so they're doing it. Okay, so do that. Copy that requires statement. Oh, this is interesting. Um, we're gonna have to. Oh, okay. Yeah, just copy that real quick. I think there is some way to get a path of another plugin. I don't remember it off the top of my head though. Um, WordPress, like uh, it's like plugin path or plugin something, and then you can. Oh, because this is. Yeah, because that's relative to the plugin you're in now. Yeah. I think you can pass. There's a function I think you can pass a plugin name and it'll get the path for it, I believe. Um, it's not. Plugin dirt path? I think that's for the current plugin. I think. File name of the plugin. File system path for the, yeah, that contains the plugin. Um, it's not ideal, but here, let's do, uh, I think this should work. So there's a constant called, or yeah, called WP underscore plugin there. So replace that file, the, the first part, the dir name file like all the way up to the dot with cat all caps WP underscore plugin underscore dir. So that's like the directory that the, that all plugins are going to be in. And mm -hmm. then, uh, so that would take us to like WP content slash plugins. And then we'll need the name of the plugin. So it'll be whatever, whatever there's is it's like WP SEO press or whatever. Yep, where's my local? So we'll need the directory and the, oh yeah, just the directory should work, right? Because then it's ink, whatever. And then I don't know if we need a, I think we need a, a yes. I think we need a slash. Wow. Yeah. So let's try that. That should include their admin file and then we can initialize the options. And then if all is working well, it'll be part of the settings registry. This will still maybe, oh shoot, we got something else happening then. Nah. Yeah. That's so let me get the debugger decided to disconnect, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Call the undefined functions add settings section. Oh, well, where are we? We are in admin PHP. <laughs> so we're at least getting there now. All right. So. So it's not, <laughs> hmm. Is that a WordPress? Yeah, that's or? a core WordPress thing. Oh I thought, yeah. I thought the hook, can you go back to your code again real quick? Any graphical request, priority 11. Cause wait, what we do in a core plugin, we hook in at priority 10 and we call 
register initial settings, which let me double check, but I believe that pulls in this stuff for us. I could be wrong though. Give me a second. Has registered. Okay, let me okay, go back to their code again. What was it complaining about? Oh, in the uh, here, the ad setting section. Oh. So register, uh, yeah. Hmm. I don't know a good way of doing this easily. But so what, <laughs> what, what we want to have happened is that they register their settings to a registry that all of WordPress can be aware of. And then they add their settings fields to the admin because the settings fields are an admin only thing, but the registry of the settings should be for all of WordPress. Um, but that's not the case. So we can, I don't know, uh, we can either just re-register all this stuff ourselves or figure out a way around this, let's see. Hmm. We can require the file from the admin that has that function just so it doesn't die on us. What other functions are they calling? I'm just curious. If you scroll down. It's setting field. Add setting section, add setting field. All right, we might get have a one liner real quick. Items. All right, this is not my favorite solution, but let's uh, go back to your code again. And then Similar to how we're requiring that file real quick, we'll require, there's a function called uh, WP admin includes template.php. Um, what is the path though? Hold on, I can't remember. Oh, what is the path? I should know this. Okay, let's see. Okay, I found a list of all the constants. Hold on. Okay, we have WP, no. So I guess it's, hmm, I don't see a constant for that actually. So do, so it's gonna be abs path, so a, all caps, A, B, S, path. That'll be all, all caps. So that'll get us to the root of WordPress. Uh, so similar to the one above, we'll do a dot after it. So that, that's gonna be the path to WordPress and then we'll say dot, okay. so like space dot, and then uh, slash uh, WP admin slash includes slash template.php. This is not my favorite way of doing it, but I think this might work. I could get there for now and go from there. <laughs> um, so that'll, that will include a file that includes those functions they're calling. Um, just so it won't like die on us, hopefully. Hey. Oh. Maybe.
Let's kill this baby. Hey, so loaded. All right. Hey, that's good news. The, so that tag thing's still not going to work. Um, right. Get Just get rid of that. This should still work. And then we should hopefully have some settings, maybe. Well, maybe. We have to have them show in GraphQL, though. Yeah. So <laughs> this was my initial attempt at that. Yeah. So hold on, no. I think um, if you register setting, oh, and you show in GraphQL, I haven't done settings in a minute. Okay, so let's see. Function SEO pressing GraphQL. Okay, so you need a. Where are we at your topic? Why is it giving you the squigglies on that function? Oh, it's just one side doc. Oh, okay. Okay. I was like, that looks like it's spelled right. Um, <laughs> okay, so we need to be inside a... Okay, you're in GraphQL register types. Cool. So are you calling that anywhere, that S SEO press in GraphQL? Yeah, I just uncommented it. But it's oh, right, here. right there, duh, right in front of my face. Uh, okay, so, and let's see. Okay, so let's check if any of these settings show up now with that. So just go in the, on the, I like to just go on the right. Oh, no, screwed somewhere else. Let's see, line 148. Maybe. Oh yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Dot. Yep. And then yeah. Uh, actually, I think I figured out. You can do curly brackets if I'm not mistaken. It might be the easier method here. I uh, if you're using double quotes, yeah. There we go. I think it's typically, I think it's recommended to use single quotes, but if this works, we'll run with it for now. Okay. So then search in the documentation explorer. Once the schema loads, let's just search for SEO real quick and see if any of these options. So advanced option group. I think that maybe worked. Boom. Is that that might get them get us all the we might have to all right oh okay this is gonna be fun yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh man i wonder if it's uh dang it they Yeah, we can go to this and it's just like shrink. Yeah, we oh, might, well, it might. Oh. Oh, what's that? So we we're filtering for the option name. But this is on register settings arc. We yeah, also so, need to Oh yeah, go ahead. So WP GraphQL, the core attempts to do its best at any setting that's registered that's set to show in GraphQL, it does its best to map to the schema automatically. But in some cases, for settings that are like arrays or objects, uh, there's not enough info in the register setting API for WP GraphQL to all right, so we're filtering register settings, which, but we're not adding, do we need to filter on settings field? No, no, no. settings field is just UI elements that for the admin. 
Um, register setting is like basically building a schema uh, that WordPress can use to say these are the settings that exist. Uh, okay. Ad setting field and ad setting section are all UI based, not like schema based, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. Okay, so scroll, so it's only these register setting ones that we're going to be concerned with at the moment. Let's scroll up to the top of all of those and let's just like look at them kind of one at a time and see what they're doing. Options. So, what? Interesting. Um, SEO press option view. All right, let's let's do this XML one. That's an easy one to look at. So, oh gosh, I need to look at the docs for register setting. Hold on. We may end up having to just do some of this by hand. Yeah. What is the sanitized function that they're calling? Because they're calling that on every one of them, which doesn't make sense to me. Because that, when you register setting, you give it an option group, an option name, and then the third thing is supposed to be an array, which consists of the type, like whether the setting is a string or uh, an array or an integer. And if every single one of their settings is using the same thing, that is a little suspect to me. A massive list of something. SEO field. press sanitize fields. Okay, so now they have this switch statement of, or whatever, for each. That. Okay, so. They're just removing. Uh, I'm not sure what they're doing here. Cause, so there should be. Like if we look at the register setting API here, I'll put it in the chat real quick so you can pull it up. I'm kind of confused. I don't even know how to access chat. Oh, I think more like, chat. There we yeah. go. Hmm. We may end up just redefining these by hand. Won't be that end of the world. It's not ideal, but uh, so register setting, you have option group, option name, but the third thing is an array, which is supposed to be the type, like whether the setting is a string or a Boolean integer or whatever, a mm -hmm. description, a callback for how to sanitize it when it's being saved, whether it should show and rest, and then like what the function for how to get it, but the, but, that's for their in their code, not not your filter. But Mark, if we look at if we look at the code they're writing, though, go back to their code real quick. The third thing they're saying is, uh, so it's where they're calling sent. So go up to register setting, where they're calling register setting. The third thing they're calling is. Uh, function so so the third thing they should be passing is arguments that define type description sanitize callback show and rest and instead they're calling a function sanitize and that's returning a whole bunch of randomness go back down to that function again sorry so they're returning field settings of the arrays key. I'm confused what they're doing. I, I think because this is going to get called when they call register settings, right? So yeah, I just don't think they're using it. Right. Breakpoint there, and then because we are getting them to show in GraphQL, um, 
I don't SEO think option group. I don't think they've defined their types properly though, like whether it's a string or a callback. So yeah, they're calling sanitize. Yeah, that should be an array and they're giving it a function. I don't know. <laughs> I I think we might have to do this by hand. I don't think they're they how old is this plugin? I wonder if they're doing something. Oh yeah, I just found it in the code. Yeah, they might okay, hold on. I found how can I link to this? Hold on one second. In WordPress core, it looks like for backward compatibility in this WP includes option.php in WordPress core, they have this back compatibility note about the third thing being a callable function instead of a list of arguments. Mm. So yeah, my guess is this code is just really old, which is whatever. Okay. So I actually need to call args here then. Well, I don't know. I think we're going to have to do this by hand because it, it looks like they're using a very old version of the register setting API before be, so the register setting API has you define whether your option is like a string or an array or whatever. Mm -hmm. Apparently somewhere back, I don't even know when, cause I don't, I've been doing WordPress for a long time and I don't even remember this, but at mm -hmm. some point you didn't have to define the type and they're using code from back then. So I don't think we have enough context to filter like this cause to map it to the GraphQL schema, we need to know whether the setting is a, like a string or an integer or a Boolean. And they're not defining right. that. So there's, okay. I don't think there's any way we can do this really programmatically. I think we're gonna have to register by hand. I'm just gonna try this, it's probably not gonna work, but. I mean, you could make everything like a string, I guess, but that's not ideal. An error has occurred. Watch, do it. Offset. Yeah. Um, you, get, get uh, rid of, if, yeah, you'd have to actually execute it. But I'm looking at it. They're not even defining the type. Uh, it would be. Is that right? No. It would be. Um, hold on. Their, their args is actually callable. So we would. Uh, hold on. We'd have to call it. Yeah, there. Okay, so hold on. Let me send you this. I I see exactly what's happening, and we don't have enough information to do this. Oh yeah, so go to this register setting link again. I'll show you what's happening. I think we're going to have to, re yeah, I think we're going to have to register all these settings by hand, sadly. So right here, if you expand that code, the, yeah, right there on line 2120. Callable. Yeah. So, so what they were passing is callable and what it's doing is saying, if it's a callable, a function, just register sanitize callback. Uh, and then if you look at the defaults above, it's defining every option as a string. So that on line 2113. Mm. So it's saying no matter what, treat everything as if it's a string. So that's what we're going to get now in the schema is that every setting, whether it's an array or an object or an integer or a Boolean, it's going to be treated as a string because that's what they told WordPress everything was because they didn't actually tell WordPress anything. So we don't have enough information. We're going to have to do this by hand. Sadly, okay. I think, but it'll be a good exercise. Well, <laughs> we I'll don't have sure enough. Are, yeah. Are we sure they're not all strings? Uh, probably. I don't know. Let's go look at the admin. I, I, I'm pretty sure at least some are booleans cause I've, I'm pretty sure I saw checkboxes. 
for like a lot true of these, false statements. like you get returned like yes which I don't know if that's the Boolean version of true for WordPress, but yeah, I mean, as a headless client, I guess like what's valuable to you, I I might rather do it by hand because like some of these are even going to be probably arrays of data. I don't know. I'm not familiar with their settings page that much. Go open yes. their go open one of their UIs, like one of their pages. And let's just look because I'd probably rather have it be useful than automatic even if we have to yeah. write more code. Fair enough. So the debugger. Uh oh. Uh, you just probably comment. Yeah. It it won't be that hard to do this. So I that's mean, string, most string, of string, it. string. Oh, a lot of them are string. Okay, but now they got what? Checkboxes. Yeah, but I wonder if it's just a yes or a no. Because I have seen <laughs> stuff come out from them that's just literally says yes. It could be. Uh, from a headless that's client. The, that's the Boolean version of true. Actually, let's... Uh, yeah, I mean, you could check it out. Um... So if you go actually set that on sample page, oh. oh. I thought I had it set somewhere, but uh, maybe it was no follow I had set. Yeah, see it's just literally like empty string or yes. So, <laughs> so the, the reason I don't like that is like if, if you're not like intimately familiar with it, like if yeah. you're just assigned, Hey, go work on this site that has this in the schema as a JavaScript well, developer building the app, you're going to want to know like, Oh, this field is a Boolean. I should expect true or false. If it's a string, like you're not going to treat it like a Boolean yeah. uh, until you're like intimately familiar with well, the schema. I mean, that I, does I validate know. with JavaScript truthiness, like empty string would validate a JavaScript as false. Yeah. So. But you have to know, <laughs> But you have to know yeah. which ones are considered booleans versus yeah. like escape right, so the string. string method. Um, so I don't know. We can we can go this way if you want and just have everything be a string. I personally I don't I'm not a fan. I think it. Yeah. I, I'd rather have it actually represent in the schema it. what it's. Yeah. Like. No. Let's. I'm gonna leave that reference there. Um, so, so let's and, maybe. Let's maybe split screen real quick and just open up, uh, if you can, just open up on like half of your screen, like their settings page. And then on the other half, your IDE. And then we can maybe just like define some of this schema. Sorry, there's settings. Oh, okay. Like so, the, uh, the UI of, uh, and then we could just define like what, how we want this to look in the schema. Like if I was a developer that knew nothing about this, like, how would I want to query this information? Um, yeah, fair enough. And then we can, and then we can add that to the show. So, so you can do just uh, in uh, add action, uh, GraphQL register types. So GraphQL register types. Yeah, and then just do the uh, function, so comma function. And then, yeah, and then hit enter, and then a st make sure you add a semicolon at the end. Oh, uh, the function? Oh, uh, right at there. the end of the parenthesis. Yeah, right there, cool. So this will hook us into when the schema is being registered. So open up, so what they have, what? One, probably what's two, happening three. up here, right? Yeah, GraphQL register types is already up here. Yeah, That's so. Right. Either way, it, it right. could, yeah. Um, so let's do um, let's do. We'll register a type for. I would say probably each of these settings would be its own type with fields. Like so, we could have like a titles and meta settings type with titles and meta fields, 
uh oh gosh how do you name that yeah it's, one <laughs> like media wait uh, uh, that's site map that world? covers all the site maps but that's the oh it's just site map. map okay so site map settings or whatever social network settings analytics settings advanced settings tools so like settings. yeah like so in GraphQL I would think there would be just like a SEO press settings and then under there I would see it all these different yeah jobs. So let's just start with one of them. Let's do like, so do re register underscore GraphQL underscore type or object type, sorry. Underscore object underscore type, sorry. And then we'll give it a name. So let's call it like SEO press titles and metas or something. Does this need a parent? Uh, this will just be the type name altogether. So you could just do, yeah, like capital titles and uh, yeah, or whatever, something like that. So that'll be the name of the type and then do a comma and then we'll do an array. So you could do square brackets or yeah, or like that, that works too. And then hit right. enter within that. I, I prefer square brackets personally, but WordPress code standards, I think still prefer the other way. This is cleaner yeah. than me. Make sure to do a semicolon. Yeah. yeah. Just don't forget that. So let's hit enter in that array. So then now we'll define. So that's the name of the type we're going to define to the schema. Yep. And then uh, we could do a description. So do just single quotes and then the word description. And then uh, you'll do an equal sign arrow. Yep. Perfect. And then, oh, yep, yep. I don't know what that's called, but equal sign arrow is good enough for me. I think fat arrow, or at least is what I've heard. Or yeah, and then I yeah. might we might as well just copy that string they have in the UI, like manage all your titles and meta or what I think maybe. Uh, we'll run with that at least to start. So that'll be Where's our description. The, is it dot 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 part of the? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> or is it truncated? Uh, hard to say. It looks like it's. Part of it. Oh, and then they have then they have subtypes in here. So and then uh, best practice in WordPress would be to translate this too. So to do that, uh, before oh, yeah. the string, just underscore underscore. So two underscores and then parentheses, and then after you'll do a comma inside of that. You do a comma. And then whatever your text domain is, so it'd be like WP GraphQL SEO Press or whatever. Um, do I have to create that somewhere? <laughs> uh, you will at some point define it, but for now, let's we'll just run with it. Okay. Um, like it, it won't hurt anything to have it undefined right now. Cool. And then so so description, and then oh yeah. <laughs> My my formatter fixed this back to the array format. Oh, okay, whatever. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. And yeah. then the next one is going to be fields. And then you have the same arrow, and then I guess old style array. <laughs> and then so this will be an array of fields. So if we look at this, we could do this a couple ways. The way I see it in my head is that we would have one, two, three, four, five fields underneath this called home, like post types, archives, taxonomies, advanced. Yep. And then each of those types then would have their own fields. So, and for field, fields best, so, oh yeah. So best practice typically for GraphQL fields, you'll, you'll do lowercase first and types you'll do uppercase first. Um, okay. So and, yeah, I would probably uh, say like, like this. Uh, I do uh, usually camel case. I think it'll actually fix it for you anyway. But so like, I'd probably just call it post types. I don't know what the single has anything to do with anything. Oh wait, yeah, what is single? Oh, is it like the? Oh, like okay, like okay, like. Sure. It. Like a single post type page. Yeah, yeah. I get, I get it. Because versus archive, okay, sure. 
I could work. I can live with that. And then archive. Yeah. So single post types, archives, taxonomies, advanced. So we could probably, I bet we could probably bust out this whole one um, fairly quick and then you could All probably right. run with it for the others. Yeah. Once I get the idea here. Yeah. So home. So this, this will be an array. So you've got to do the arrow thing again. Uh, yeah. Whatever it's called. And then uh, array. So same. So this, we're going to define the field here now. So it needs a type definition. So in this case, it's going to be another type that has fields called separator title, site title, meta description, right? So we'll define that type in a second. So just say the type, yeah, say the word type uh, in single quotes again. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And then we'll, is equal to, and it'd probably be like, uh, I don't know, <laughs> whatever we want to call that field group. Um, like is, home. This isn't for, is it'd be like, for it's all of home, right? So, yeah, right. it'd be like home titles and metas or whatever. You could, yeah, SEO press home titles and meta maybe. Yeah, and then you got an extra P in there. Uh, I need to move cool. my home. To so we'll have we'll have to go to yeah. Oh yeah, that or yeah, that works. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, this should be capital right because this is SEO press titles and meta. Yes. Is yeah. Titles, yeah. Titles. yeah. This looks great. Cool. So we'll we go back and define that type in a minute. Let's go. Let's define the rest of these types uh, for the single post types, archive taxonomies. Okay. So you can also, you can also add description. So you could add a type and a description, but uh, maybe we could add one of those and then you could follow up and add the rest. Um, or we could do them all, whatever, it's not. I kind of like their settings page UI. It's kind of nice looking. Yeah, it's uh, from the front side. It's a nice SEO plugin, but it sounds like uh, the code's a little arcane. And their docs yeah. are a lot are really nice. So yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. make sure you got to add commas after. Yeah, each one. Yep, cool. So go. and then we could add descriptions to all of them too. So under type, you could do description. And then I would just, they have that single like line of text at the top. And I'd probably do that for each one. And then, uh, yeah, so then these will, these will show up in the graphical, which is nice. And it may or may not over time make sense to change the description in the GraphQL schema versus the admin, but just a good starting point. Because one thing like I try to think about in a like GraphQL context, you I think it's best to assume that the person doesn't know anything about the underlying system. Yeah. You know? Fair. Like it's hard to do that when you're building it because like obviously you you know it's WordPress right now. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, five years from now somebody might get assigned, hey, here's this GraphQL API, I need you to build something, and they're gonna have to explore the schema without knowing anything about WordPress. Yeah. Um well, cool. So that gives us I'm the fields <laughs> and the descriptions. So now we need to define these types. Why don't you comment, like leave those, but comment out all except the home one real quick, just so we just coming out. Yeah, those ones real quick. And let's define that uh, SEO press title as Meta's home type uh, real quick. So we can do this either above or below this chunk of code. So just take the name of it, SEO press title as Meta's uh, home. So we'll have to do another register, register GraphQL object type. And you can do it above or below, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so you do register. 
and then that'll be the name and then say oh whoops and then uh, comma array again and then and then you could optionally do a description again um, you could probably use the same description we paste it on the field or skip it for now yeah and then uh, so then we can add fields then we'll have to define fields and then don't forget the semicolon it's a uh, unlike javascript we need them <laughs> I, the good news is i think this is what formatters are for oh no, it's not doing it it doesn't yeah um, so in this case, so now fields, so let's go in the UI, click back to home and let's see what all fields is on the home page. Okay, so we're, we're gonna have three fields. So uh, we'll call one separator. And then same thing, array. And then uh, we give it a type, so string. Yeah, it shouldn't matter. I just as preference, I always capitalize the types, but a lower it will work lowercase. Type, oh, okay, but that's just a kind of preference. Uh, and then we could add a description if you want again, and just copy from there. We don't have to do all the descriptions geez. like on this call. Just uh, you could probably swing back through and add those or open an issue and label it good first issue for someone else. Yeah. Um, Not online. So, right. okay, so now, now we're gonna write a resolver because now when yeah. somebody gets to this point, we want it to return something. We're gonna actually probably have to, yeah, anyway. Well, Okay, yeah, we may, da, 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 da. yeah, let's try to resolve her here. So resolve and then the arrow sign function or whatever. Yeah, arrow sign. I think you missed a comma maybe on the line before. Is that why it's grumpy? After description. Is it after description? Do you have a comma? On the, like use the separator with whatever? Yep. Oh, you do. Okay. I thought it was maybe grumpy about that. All right. So resolve and then is equal to function. So like it'll be a callback. And then let's just for right now, just say return inside the function. Just say like return something like just let's uh, okay. return any return old string no. for right now. Or, oh, sorry. Inside the squiggly or yeah, those brackets, braces, whatever they're called. Yeah. Just return like literally the word something. Yeah. The, Cool. Yep. And then one word. Semi -colon. There's one word. <laughs> All right. Uh, Did I just change it to square brackets? Oh, oh, you misspelled function. Yeah. And sometimes there are videos of people coding, and I'm like, wow, I wish I could type that fast. I've been, you know, doing this professionally for close to 15 years, and I still can't type. And then you need a semicolon after the placeholder string. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now it's all happy. Cool. So now we have these types, and then we need to register. We need to register the initial one to the root query. So go up, get the type name, the first type we defined, which was SEO Press Titles Metas. And then down below, we'll say register GraphQL field or up here, it doesn't really matter where, wherever you want to do it. So we'll say register GraphQL field. And then, um, so this API, the first thing we pass, the first thing we pass is the type we want to register to. And the second one is the uh, field we want to register. So first thing is going to be root query. It'll be, yeah, root query. Yep. Yeah. So we're going to register field to root query. The second thing is going to be the field name. So it could be, yeah. 
Uh, it'll probably be SEO press titles metas on right on or isn't that pissed though? Oh, it depends how we want to do it. Uh, do you want to access titles and metas from the root, or do you want to go like two levels in? Like, do you want to query SEO press settings, SEO press titles, metas? That's what I would do. That that, that makes sense to me. Like two levels deep. Yeah. Okay, that works then. So we'll have to register another type. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's just do it this at the root, just so you can see um, what's going to happen. And then if you want to change it, you can. Uh, we'll, yeah, yeah. So that'll end up being at the root. And then the third thing we'll pass is an array defining um, this field type. So similar to the ones below, how we define a type and description, we'll do a type and description. Um, so type, and then in this case, it'll be SEO press title metas. And then the description, you can use the same description or whatever, or leave it blank. Um, I'd probably just use the same one. Actually, if you leave this blank, I think it inherits it from the type. Beautiful. I think. What well, we're find so, out. What are we missing? Okay. There we go. So that will give us, that should give us that type at the root query. It's not going to resolve yet. Uh, oh, well, you could have it resolve real quick by, yeah, it's not going to resolve quite yet. We wrote a resolver yeah. for the title metas home separator field. Cool. Yeah, so this is just going to give us like a null, I think, right now. Uh, but it's be, there. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we, we didn't resolve. Yeah, we didn't resolve the top level one. Bro, so this needs a resolver. Yeah, so what we could do, the simplest thing here, what we could go one of two ways. I don't know enough about how their data is stored. Mm -hmm. um, there's potential we could do like a get option here and it'll give us like an array of their settings. I don't know how they're stored. We'd have to go look. We can look if you want. Um, or we can just say resolve and then we can uh, do function return true and that will just pass it to the next level. So that will tell GraphQL like, oh, continue to the next level of the tree. So that will go one level deeper. So now we're getting home and then on the home field, we can do the same thing and just say return true. So right there. Under okay. description, we can say return true. Uh, right under the, yeah, right there on line 180. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, on the home field, sorry, on line 180, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, under that description. Oh, no, 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 sorry. For the home right. field. Yeah, there yeah, there we go. Right. Perfect. There we go. And then it, you could do the same thing true here, uh, function return true. And then that'll tell GraphQL, yeah, just go to the next level. Hey. So now we got our placeholder. So depending on how they store their data, I'll show you, uh, you'll have to look into this or okay, I got 10 minutes or so minutes left. Okay. Um, Comment out real quick. I just want to show you another way we can do this. Comment out that resolve function we just added. And then the other one up that we added up at the top. Comment that one out again. Or no, no, no. Don't comment this one out. Sorry. Instead of return true on this one, let's return an array. And the first key of the array, let's have it be home and then have that be an array. And then inside that array have one, uh, have the first key be separator. And then have the value be just anything you want, just some string, like something, whatever, yeah. And now, now go comment out the resolver at the bottom of our file, uh, the placeholder one, yeah. 
So now if you execute it, it should be something or anything. So, so we have some options here. It depends on how they're storing data. If, if they're storing data as like an array, we might want to get that array early and just pass it down. Right. But if each option is stored in its own option, then we might want to get it at the, the leaf of the tree individually. So we have options here. We can get it at the top level, pass it down. And if the key right. that you pass down matches the, the field in GraphQL, GraphQL is smart enough to just resolve it like it just did. So, so do you have like SQL Pro or anything where you can open this up? Uh, if not, I can, I can on my end. I have, I have SEO Press installed so I can pull it up and look. I just want to look at like the raw data, how they're stored. Oh yeah. Perfect. Local. Yeah. Admin or should work. I just want to look at, I think based on how they're registering these settings, I think they're getting stored in just like big arrays. So go to WP options. Oh gosh. Show structure. Uh, I think that's what you're on now. I think you're gonna have to go to select data. Okay. Then we got to find one of their. Okay. This UI is awesome. Um, oh, option sure. name. Do they have like a like or yeah, a like, and then just put like SEO. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. So they are doing. So which one is the home one? SEO is it? SEO is it that first one? Yeah. Okay, so copy yeah. that real quick. Let's do, and then in our resolver for the top, so we're going to do a top level and pass down. It looks, well, maybe this could be interesting. Go, go up <laughs> to our first resolver. It's going to, it'll still work. Um, so instead of this, you can comment that out or just delete it. Um, this whole array. If it's helpful for you to have for reference, you could leave it there. We yeah, want maybe. to resolve function, just the insides of it. Or yeah. Write a new one, that's okay. fine too. Yeah, whatever. You get to write yeah, a new right. one. All right. yeah. So it'll still be function. Uh, and then, so let's do like, let's create an, a variable like um, options or whatever. Yeah, or settings or whatever you want to call it. And then we'll say equals git underscore option. And then, yep, so that will get us the value. So then a semicolon after that. And then um, one thing I like to do just to see the raw data, click enter and hit WP underscore send underscore JSON. This kind of like a debug thing I like to do. Um, it's just fun. But yeah, then semicolon and then go execute this in GraphQL again. And so this is, this is basically like a breakpoint, and it's going to send JSON, the, sh the JSON at this point back to GraphQL. Oh. So it's like the value of the get option, like, boom, now we have it in JSON form. So we can just kind of see what data exists raw. Um, we, so this, is, this, this, array or whatever this object is what mm -hmm. will get passed down the tree to the next level so okay. the next level is looking for a field called home well okay so oh so the home title home description yeah is that what we're yeah title description. title separator and description cool so we're gonna have to map these um and so I can show you how to do that. Oh, so this is interesting. This whole tabbed UI. Oh, interesting. This whole tabbed UI is all stored in here. Wait. Yeah. Yeah. Home. Oh, wait. No. Oh yeah, it is. It's literally not broken up by tabs in this object. 
This is an object, not an array of objects. Interesting. There's our separator. All right. Well, so what you can do, just uh, so, so you can comment out the send JSON or just delete it. It might be good for reference. So just return options real quick. So that that will at least tell GraphQL, okay, I have some data. Pass it to the next level. We'll we'll let the next level figure out what to do. So now for home, I think uh, let's just let's. Uh, so for home, so resolvers, yeah, uncomment that. So resolver is one thing with resolvers. All resolvers are going to get something passed to it. So the first argument, yeah, in this case would be options. You can name it whatever you want, but it's just going to be that piece of data getting passed down. So right. in our case, we'll get options passed down. And then, yeah. and then we, we can just, just continue passing pass it down probably at this point. Yeah. Cause if, yeah, if there's no like sub objects, down to. Yeah. And so then our last one, this one is where we'll actually pluck that option out of uh, the object. So function, you'll get options passed to it still. And then uh, we'll return what is, so uh, do option, so say return options. It's not going to be an array here. We need to return a string at this point. Cause that's our, we, that's our type. Oh, this is our separator. Is okay. So we're going to say return options at the, so do dollar sign options. Uh, sorry. As the, as the return. Yeah. Or that's just do it as the return for now. Uh, dollar sign options and then do square brackets and then single quotes, the name of the key. So this would be, which one is this separator? This one. Yeah, so so we we would act will actually you want to 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 make sure you don't get any PHP warnings. You want to make sure this is set before you return it. So you'd say like you could do a ternary like return and then you could say is set like ISSET. You, yeah, you don't even need to do if. You could just say is set, um, and then yeah, like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. This is and then you could say like question mark. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And then yeah, options as you press whatever. I I don't well, know what the one is. Yeah. Oh no, you could say yeah. Oh yeah, that works too. Yep. And then don't forget the uh, semicolon up there after. That's going to get you. <laughs> uh, so now hit play, and we should get the separator now. Boom. Freaking awesome. Cool. So so this, I, I, as, as fun as it would have been to have it, like, automatically happen, <laughs> I actually – I think this is probably going to end up with like a higher quality result. Cause like the schema yeah. I think is going to be like, clearly they made decisions like 10 years ago on how to build this. And now 10 years later, you're like, Oh, like I can clean this up. Uh, so I would play with this. I think this gets you probably a pretty good chunk of info to run with now. Um, so I think you could probably build out the rest of the pages. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you want, we can look at the taxonomy one. Well, actually, I gotta, I gotta step out. You're out of bounds. Um, but yeah, but I'm, I would be, I'd be down to help if you put the code up even somewhere and just like open an issue with what you're struggling with it. Um, I, I could take a look because I, okay. that query post you probably don't want to do, but I can help with that. Um, you'll use like. WP it's new WP query instead of query posts because query posts I think is like an uncached thing from like a long yeah time ago. well I don't even know why this exists I don't really uh, understand what it does because right because yeah. the the term is already getting passed in so why am I getting the term again oh yeah um yeah you shouldn't you shouldn't 
I mean, at this point though, this resolver is never running. Right. Yeah, where where is this? So you say register GraphQL field. So to like tag for okay. Yeah, okay. So then SEO, you have type SEO resolver gets the term passed to it. You're passing an array. Yeah, you don't need you shouldn't need any of that stuff. Yeah. So you pass the array. This looks I think good. Right. The issue is so like I've, I've walked through this on the debugger, the register f GraphQL field is happening. Um, oh. but as okay. So what you're actually getting past here is not a WordPress term. We have like a model layer in GraphQL, um, that so WordPress doesn't have like a central way of checking like authorization, like whether you, oh, okay. you, the requester can see something. So okay. WP GraphQL, we came up with this model layer where like uh, you take a WordPress object like WP term object and we, we pass it through a model layer that says, do you, the user, have access to see this object? And if you do, do you have access to see all the fields of this object? Because uh, some things like for a user, for example, if you ask for a user, like the name is public, but the email is private. Unless right. if you're an admin, you can see the email or if you are the user itself, you can see the email. But if you're just a public user, it's a private field. So like there's a lot of logic to figure out like who should be able to see what. And okay. so what you're getting past is an instance of the term model instead of a WP term. So the fields are going to be slightly different. So that's, that's the problem here. So term object. Uh, so you could do it just like that if you want. Um, you could get the term and then use the regular term object. Uh, let me see what you're doing down on line, lines 121 and stuff. Okay, so com comment out real quick up up above up above where you said get object. Yeah, or get just comment that one out too, and then change that first one to term ID instead of ID. And then I think that might solve your problem, maybe. And if it doesn't, then it's going to be close. Oh, it should be, yeah, term instead of term object. Yeah. I've never been good at this multi cursor thing. Yeah, I keep trying to, you know, teach myself here and see how well that's going. Um, so you'll have to write a query for the, and then this will probably be the last thing for me. Uh, is it, oh, is it showing? Okay. That's the thing that, like, you know, or did we not get it to show properly? Exactly. It's not even showing up on. Oh, okay. Go up. We might've screwed something up with how it's being registered. Let's go up and look. But that's what I'm saying. That it was never registering properly in the first place. So the, re okay. So here's one thing to know too. Um, oh, you shouldn't need to do well. Yeah. The text. How are you getting the taxonomies? Yeah. So he starts oh, yeah. off by just Get allowed getting a list of taxonomies. Okay. And then he does the post types and then he does taxonomies. Yeah, that that looks right. So let me see, what are we doing wrong here? So we're saying register GraphQL field, GraphQL single name, that looks right. Um, field name there, type. SEO. So do we have that type SEO defined? Uh, yes, I believe so. Oh, that might be, uh, there we go. Yep. There we go. I updated the name of it and probably broke it. Ah, uh, so that, that'll probably fix it. And then post page. Yeah. Take a second. 
Hey. All, right. All right, so do a query for it. I think I think we should be in good shape now then. Nice. I don't know that I have any data in here. Sure, but still it's it's working. Like it's not yeah. puking on you. So one, one thing just to note, like when you're building stuff, if, if like the schema for whatever reason, like isn't showing up at all, or like you have errors with stuff showing in the schema, mm -hmm. you, you shouldn't need to debug in your resolvers. Resolver, like when your schema loads, no resolver right. at all executes. Right, is ever getting executed. Yeah. And I figured that out. So it's like trying to figure out what my issue was. Yeah, so th that's just I a quick thing. Those, yep. Updated those types and missed the half of it. If you click the play button and then something barfs on you, then then you want to check your resolvers. Right. All right, test title. It's even working. Perfect. Man, this is sweet. I'm excited to see where this goes. I think I think this could be a really good project for sure. Yeah. And I don't I don't think it's gonna take that long either. I think like you got a lot of the fundamentals now, so it's just kind of mapping stuff. Uh and yeah, that it doesn't seem like they have too complicated of data. Oh, don't get rid of oh. one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to hop off. Um, All right. Thanks, I'll, uh, I'll put this recording up on YouTube or whatever here in a few days. Cool. Yeah. Shoot me a link when you do. And then, uh, yeah, this is great. If you have any more questions or whatever, just holler in Slack and we'll figure it out. Or, or get the code up on GitHub and open issues and feel free to mention me on the issue or whatever and I'll... Yeah, yeah, most there. of this is on GitHub, but I'll start getting more of it and uh, get some of these, at least the bug fixes up right away and then and I'll get so, some working on the other stuff. 